you know, um, fiber is actually, um, you know, the bedrock of everything. We can uh, talk uh, digital uh, connection without fiber. So we then realized that there is actually a shortage of skill, uh, particularly to, to women. The support we get, we're very empowered. Now uh, we're speaking tech language now. We're the cool kids now. I think we're the pioneers of the fourth IR. Hi ladies and gentlemen, welcome to IT Web TV. My name is Lumia Nemsomi. I'll be your host today. Today we're going to be speaking about women in tech and we're here with my guests who are part of a amazing fiber optics program that is in partnership with MICT CETA. So before I get into it, I'm gonna let my guests introduce themselves and then we'll get started. My name is Oamuhe Tuichikwado and I am a beneficiary of the optic fiber um, program um, funded by the MICTC CETA. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gugu Sema. I'm the senior manager for IR in the MICTC CETA. Uh, my name is Ipo Mahalema. I'm from the Digital Council uh, Africa, uh, responsible for uh, training and special projects. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here with me today. Um, before we get into the beneficiaries of the program. Google, can you just give us some background on how this came about? Certainly, um, Lumile. Uh, firstly, let me introduce the MICT CETA. MICT CETA is one of the um, 21 CETAs that we have in the country. We are mandated to coordinate and facilitate skills development across five subsectors. Um, that is advertising, media, um, electronics, telecommunication, and ICT. Back in 2019, uh, uh, when the country was embracing the fourth industrial revolution, we were one of the first CETA that uh, was um, in the forefront, uh, um, you know, also embracing the fourth industrial revolution, um, mainly because we are working closely with the ICT industry where all the technological advancement um, are happening there. Um, we then established the uh, 4IR division, so even to date we are the first CETA uh, that has a, a 4IR uh, division um, mandated to ensure that the MICT CETA deliver on its mandate in relation to the 4IR um, the imperative or the, the 4IR um, skills, uh, ensuring that we are also closing the 4IR um, skills gaps or the skills gaps that has been introduced by this uh, technological advancement. In doing so, we have also um, developed what we uh, now call the ITSS or the Integrated Digital Skills Strategy. And that strategy is the strategy that uh, governs the uh, 4IR division that also enable the MICT CETA to identify strategic partners um, that will assist the MICT CETA to implement um, the, the strategy. Um, Digital Council here is one of the strategic partners that we have entered into an MOU with them uh, uh, to collaborate on 4IR um, initiative or skills uh, initiative. So the um, fiber optic um, program um, that um, was implemented uh, in collaboration with uh, the Digital Council, as well as Signa, who was the develop or delivery partner appointed by the di Digital uh, Council, uh, actually is the implementation of that uh, integrated digital skills strategy. So what you see here, it's a work o um, that has started four years ago. It manifests now because in that strategy, we have also written that we want um, every um, South African unemployed youth to be exposed to their future skill. So fiber is one of the uh, future skills um, because we cannot be talking fi for IR and not talking fiber. All these technologies, you know, um, they um, run or they um, use, uh, you know, um, fiber is actually, um, you know, the bedrock of everything we can uh, 
TikTok uh, digital uh, connection without fiber. Now, it's a skill that um, we want uh, or most of the South African young people to be exposed to, to be trained, you know, because once they have this skill, they will be able then um, to secure employment. They will also be able to um, uh, start, you know, um, work for themselves as technician. Uh, they can got contract as entrepreneurs uh, that um, contracted on, on the fiber space. So that's um, where the program comes from. And then speaking to you, Sifo, um, as a partner, can you just give us a bit of background on your role in this program? Okay, no, thank you. Uh, firstly, let me introduce uh, Digital Council. So Digital Council is a for non-profit uh, organization. Uh, it actually was established in uh, 2010 as the FTTX Council, so meaning fiber to, to X. Um, so it then reprinted in uh, 2020 uh, to be the Digital Council, meaning including um, the other uh, uh, partners uh, to be our members. So this will be uh, mostly the, uh, the data center uh, market. So the Digital Council uh, really uh, look at after uh, our members, um, which are mostly the telecoms, uh, to on the advocacy uh, policy uh, to make sure that we develop the infrastructure development or we have the infrastructure development of the telecommunications. So, yeah, so that's basically in a nutshell uh, to what we do. And in terms of um, this fiber optics program, what is your the Digital Council's role in implementing this program? No, okay, so when we came uh, on board to work with the um, MSCT CETA, uh, because we, our members are actually the developers of the fiber market, so we then realized that there is actually a shortage of skill, uh, particularly to, to women. Um, so uh, they, they have way less percentage uh, of women who are actually technicians to put and splice the fiber and run the fiber and all those things. So on this program, when we engage with um, uh, MSCT CETAO was to say, uh, it will be very interesting and then uh, will be uh, making a very good difference if we then also particularly focus on training women uh, to understand, but also particularly taking the women uh, from the township. So, I mean, I think I'm, I'm privileged that I worked with the uh, ladies um, in, in the township uh, to actually um, assist them to understand what's happening in the fiber, but also to help them understand the benefits that they can get in this, uh, um, in this industry. And going back to you, Gugu, can you please explain why is the program only for women or young ladies? So we also wanted to close the gap that is currently existing in the telco space, in the fiber space, uh, because we know that it's a male-dominated uh, industry, but also um, to expose our young uh, uh, women on, in this space, uh, as I've indicated earlier, that in our strategy we have put down that we want every South African youth unemployed you to be exposed to the future skill. Mm -hmm. um, and these future skills, um, uh, uh, you, if you look at the history, uh, they, uh, they are IT skills where there's still, even today, uh, it's an industry that is male-dominated. Now, to try and, and, and bridge the gap and blend, we then need to um, ensure that we also prioritize on women. We upskill them, we, we expose them to this um, different skills uh, or these occupation that were previously uh, male dominated. Mm. So, in terms of the actual program itself, what are some of the requirements that are needed from wannabe participants to get into um, the fiber optics program? So, um, for this specifically uh, program, in other future <coughs> skills um, or occupational uh, skills that or, or qualification that we have all um, uh, developed. We're only uh, looking at grade 12, mm -hmm. um, a good attitude, mm -hmm. uh, because that will then enable them, you know, to learn this um, new uh, phenomenon or uh, new skills. So uh, basically it's grade 12. Mm -hmm. yeah. And going back to you, Sipo, 
in your experience with working with these young ladies, what are some of the things that you've seen that have really taken your breath away? Um, I mean, I think um, working with these, because I was working closely uh, with the ladies, mm. uh, one of the other things that I've learned is that, uh, you know, um, it's, 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 it's very interesting and also uplifting mm. to find that um, you get into a program, you really didn't have any clue. And then when you get there, you see the opportunities uh, that can be uh, laid up there. Uh, because uh, some of the comments that they will make will be uh, some didn't even understand that uh, fiber is actually a layer mm. for all these technologies that they use, your TikToks and all those things. So the more you have high speed of internet, uh, um, then you are able to do all these things that you want to do. So uh, for them uh, to be in that one, they also saw it as a privilege because uh, you are in a space where with your presence, you uh, you can actually enable other people to be connected. Yeah. So, I mean, it was very, pri I was very privileged to work with the ladies. Um, I, obviously, I've learned a lot from them, uh, but also uh, for them to learn in the industry and also be exposed because the more they get exposed, the more they see more of the opportunities. Now, also to add on, um, I mean, we were privileged, uh, our members, uh, when we raised uh, our hand to say, uh, look, um, the learners will be doing the theoretical uh, part and then they also do the practical uh, part of it. Uh, our members, because of understanding of the uh, specific need around uh, this industry, uh, they open their, uh, their arms uh, to, to welcome our learners, uh, get them into their offices and actually uh, really uh, train them uh, to be this and give them the um, uh, industry exposure. Uh, most importantly, a uh, hair hotel uh, who took our learners through the uh, the the training, and also uh, the Huawei who also took the, our learners into the training to also expose them in the technologies that they work around to ensure that these uh, learners would then be able to uh, thrive mm -hmm. uh, in future. So we we'll have our second beneficiary of the program <coughs> here with us. May you just please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Ntwaki Matai, and as you said, I'm also part of the beneficiaries of the program. And Ntwaki, can you please just tell us about your experience um, during the program? Okay, if I'd have to tell you everything, we'll probably finish tomorrow. <laughs> but i just um, highlight the most important thing, that program was very, very educating, we were introduced to a lot of things. The support we get, we were very empowered. It, it was a very good program to start with. Of course, every initiative have setbacks, but in all of that, we took that and made them into a positive change. So I'm very happy with all the experience that I got there. Great. And can you all the way from Pretoria. Can you tell us about your experience during the program? First, um, it was overwhelming to have to work with 25 women. We, um, we learned a lot actually from this program. It exposed us to a lot of opportunities firstly, because I'd like to believe that now uh, we're speaking Tick language now. We're the cool kids now. I think we're the pioneers of the fourth IR. And um, because of the program also, we can now have conversations with men in rooms that are male dominated and actually leave there having made um, decisions that are obviously um, chaired and led by us as women. So more than anything, it was an eye opener and an opportunity to expose and, you know, grab average every opportunity uh, we, you know, have in skills development industries, most importantly. When it comes to your experience in Zwaki, did you have any experience before um, the program when it comes to the tech industry? No, honestly, but I've always known that my job will have anything to do with computers and internet. So I'd say I'd seen the generation before me struggle with keeping up with the technology. So I didn't want to put myself in that position. So from that, like for me, it was finding the right career in the technology. So this one has been the best it's been so great. far. Yes. <laughs> and 
going into the program, were there any expectations that you had? Were you ready to learn new things or did you just dread the fact that you were going to throw yourself deep into the IT sector? Okay, expectations. You know, when you get yourself into an industry where it's male dominated, the first thing you think about is gender bias. Yes, it was always on my head, but I always had that motivation to diminish the stigma around the gender uh, gender inequalities. But other than that, and also, oh, oh, and also, I like to highlight the fact that I was very nervous about the lack of. Uh, representation we get from these companies as women but the whole experience in this training has been very different we were all overrepresented surprisingly but I don't know, like we had so much fun everything was okay that's that's amazing and you know we are heading into women's month next month and it is amazing to see these sort of programs that focus on uplifting women in the IT sector. With everything that you've learned during the program, where do you see yourself taking these skills? Um, okay, this one is a bit personal, so I'm going to go all hot in. So because firstly, I um, was pursue and currently I'm still pursuing a career in engineering, electrical engineering to be precise. Um, when I first started the journey of um, getting into the male domestic industry, it was challenging because I remember first day of registration the guy at the office was like are you sure you're registering for engineering um why don't you do something like beauty therapy or cooking you know because you're a girl man you're fragile and it's like okay what does an engineer look like if you're a woman because I mean is there a certain look do I have to look masculine or something and he was like no it's just that you're gonna get hurt and all of those things and I was like actually that's where I actually want to find myself and I took it upon myself to challenge the system. And uh, I like to call it a myth because it's a myth that women can't do things that women can do um, on the basis that it's hard labor, right? And um, when I got into the um, telecoms and optic fiber industry, for me, it was like the first few days was like, yo, where? what did I get myself into? But I remember the first day of registration and you can't do that because you're a girl. And I took it upon myself to go stand with those men who were digging trenches and were doing very hard labor. And I was not trying to touch anything, but I was trying to look so that, you know, I'm at least aware of what they're doing. So um, I'd want to take the experience I've learned to teach and create a ladder for other young black girls, especially to get into skills development, you know, and to equip themselves, you know, in marketable skills now because the world is digital. Everything is fourth IR and if you're not speaking that language then you're not the cool kid or you're behind times so um, I think more than anything my role right now is to create opportunities for other young girls and the only way to do that is to be the best person of myself and of course they'll look up to me and say oh it's that girl who they said must do PT therapy I can still have my lashes on and you know have my nails on and still do all those things I can t attest to that because I was assembling things with my nails, even though it was difficult, but I was like, girl, you know, <laughs> I'm going to bring all my girls on our. Yeah, that, no, that's really great. And, you know, these programs, this is what it's all about, um, especially exposing young black girls to the IT sector. I mean, we live in a digital world. We have no choice. So, Gugu, just going back to you, um, with everything that has happened with this group of graduates, how do you feel about the program and its success so far? Honestly, it's so humbling to see, you know, this work manifesting, you know, uh, because when we were writing the strategy, we, we, were, we were writing, we, we had these young people in mind, we didn't even know who are them, you know, just writing that every young unemployed South African must be exposed on the future skill. And four years later, we see that happening. So this is a great testimony. It feels good, and we want to do more. Mm. You know, hence we call out on the industry, uh, on our partners to come on board, those who really have interest to contribute um, to this vision. You know, for having uh, giving young South unemployed South African um, 
an opportunity, you know, to learn this future skill because these are the skills that are needed that have changed the world, are going to change, um, you know, the entire economy for the next coming decade. And um, we did not only, you know, write that down, we also wrote that we need to ensure that we, we, we develop uh, the, uh, these future skills as qualifications. And to date, we have developed about 38 qualification, occupational qualification, 4IR aligned um, occupational qualification. And um, we have started uh, with pilots. We are piloting across the country. We recently had graduations uh, um, from the Northern Cape where we expose another 25 young people on Internet of Things. We are, are going to, again, for a second cohort with the uh, Digital Council for another 25 young women uh, that will be exposed on the uh, fiber optic. Um, we uh, another partner, again, uh, in the process of um, starting a, a 5G so uh, again, those seeing all that you know are coming to pass, it's really humbling uh, to see that our young people are taking up and the good attitude that they are bringing. You know, they are open to learn. They wanna learn. They wanna know more, and and also to ensure that uh, it end it doesn't end with them, but they also create other opportunities for other young people. So it's really um, uh, mind blowing and humbling. Thank you. And. You know, going forward, um, if there's going to be so many young girls who are going to be watching this, hopefully, um, can you just tell them how to get in touch with MICT CETA, how to get themselves into the program, and any other future programs that you might have? Okay, thanks. So MICT CETA, first, our offices, head office, they are in, in Mitrend, the Galaga Estates. Uh, we also have present in um, Deben, East London, and Cape Town. We are live on social media, um, Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, from time to time, whenever there are these opportunities, we do advertise on our social media. Um, they can also reach out to us at 011-207-2000. Uh, uh, they can access us. And just to round it off um, for our beneficiaries, can you just, you guys just tell us now that you've gone through this program and you know you want to be in the tech industry, are there any companies that you are looking forward to approaching maybe for opportunities to get further into the industry? Of course, uh, I am eyeing Huawei with a very sharp corner eye. <laughs> um, this is because I've always fantasized of um, being in Japan, in China, where the technology is so incredible. Of course, um, um, it might not happen that way, but I am really, really, really crossed fingers, hoping that other opportunities are opened <clears throat> in Hawaii, of course, for me to learn more and hopefully just find myself in Japan somewhere, somehow. Okay, I will also say the same. For me, it's Hawaii. We learned a lot. Hawaii is very diverse. It's very huge. You know, we're, we're going to cross fingers for you guys, and hopefully those dreams do come true. Thank you so much for joining me today. This has been amazing, and hopefully we will come back here, you, you guys at Huawei and Gugu, when you have another initiative for us to speak about. We'll see each other at this very same table. Thank you so much for watching ITWeb TV. You.